What is up everyone, Nick here, and in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at my 3D printed light batons from Tron Legacy. So if you've been a fan of the channel for a while, you would already know that I am a huge fan of Tron Legacy. Now on the channel, we've had the chance to build identity discs, we've even built Rinsler's helmet, and today we're going to be building what is arguably one of the most iconic pieces of hardware in the Tron universe. So if you're not aware, the light baton in Tron Legacy is a neat piece of kit. It can turn into basically anything. We mostly see it turn into light cycles, but it can also turn into other vehicles. And on top of that, it can turn into weapons like nunchucks chucks, swords, and even staffs. So since I can't realistically turn this into a bike, we're going to be focusing on the swords and the staffs. Now there is already one light baton available on the market that you can buy, but I have two issues with it. One, it's super expensive, and two, it's not even movie accurate. Basically the way they illuminate the keypad on the light baton is by having it closer to the edge here. That way it can just be illuminated by the lightsaber blade. But personally, I just don't like it. Now the key for this project was to design a more or less accurate light baton around a lightsaber core. That way I don't really have to worry about how the electronics work. Which is why I used a lightsaber core from Damien Saber with a Profiboard 2.2. That way all I had to do was slightly modify it, add some new fonts, and just slap it inside. The only issue is I'm not a 3D modeler. I can modify 3D files more or less, but to design something like this from scratch, no. Trust me, I tried and it did not go well. So I ended up commissioning Neon Robotnik to actually 3D model all the files for this. And we did did a lot of back and forth trying to figure out the best way to build this. And as you can see, it took a lot of trial and error to get this to work. So for example, when we were initially working on this design, we used these little lips so that we could screw the halves together. The only problem is they break along the layer lines. And this is kind of the reason why most people stray away from 3D printing their own lightsabers. Most of the time, you're going to have failures along the layer lines because that is where the 3D print is weakest, especially when the parts are as thin as they are on this. I'm gonna start disassembling one of the light batons and I'm gonna show you how we were able to get around that. Yeah. So I guess we can start at the very end of the light baton. There are two screws on either side that basically sandwich the three layers together. So you have the sound chamber itself, the outer black portion of the light baton, and the rails that everything attaches to. So I'm going to slowly but surely unscrew this. So all the screws I'm using in this are M3 screws, except for the grub screws, which I'm using to grip into the lightsaber blade. Those are M4 screws. So with those two screws removed, we can just remove this part of the sound chamber. So for the sound chamber, I'm actually using two threaded inserts on either side for the M3 screws. This just helps with the overall strength of the light baton. And before we start unscrewing all the rest of the screws around this silver bit, we are going to gently remove the button which is held in with a magnet. Come on, there we go. So at the end of this button, we have an M8 by two magnet, which connects to another magnet on the inside. Now, the reason why we have to remove this first is because everything slides onto one another. So with the button out of the way, we can actually do that. And now that we have the sound chamber out of the way, we can actually just pull on it and slide it right off the chassis. So if we take a look, we have the actual lightsaber core on the inside from Damien Saber and on either side we have these long rails. Now on this light baton right here, the rails are 3D printed out of PLA, and that's more than enough because those rails are actually 3D printed flat on the bed with supports. That means that when the light baton flexes on either side, it's not going to split along the layer lines because the layer lines are actually perpendicular to the light baton itself. And that was the first version of the light baton I ever built, and I've had this for quite a few months now, and I've had zero issues with it. Now when I rebuilt the second version of the light baton, I wanted to use something even sturdier. Even sturdier, is that, is that a word? Anyways, I wanted something stronger, so I had it SLS printed out of aluminum by PCBWay. Now PCBWay, if you don't know it already, is this channel sponsor, and they are the industry leader when it comes to PCB fabrication and 3D printing solutions. From custom circuit boards to innovative 3D printed prototypes, PCBWay offers unparalleled quality, fast turnaround times, and competitive pricing. And now that we have all six screws removed, we can just simply slide the this piece off too. So this centerpiece is actually three different 3D printed parts. We have the silver portion and then we have the number pad itself. And the number pad is also two pieces. We have this front black grill piece 
and underneath it, we have a transparent PLA piece for the buttons. No glue is needed, although you can use glue to make sure that everything stays together. And what's really neat about this is that we can take this and place it on the other side if we want the number pad to be on the other side too. Or we can even 3D print two different number pads and have them on either side. And now that we have that removed, we can also grab the kill switch button. Oh, don't turn it on. I just want to pull it out or just turn it on, I guess. There we go. And this comes out super easily and then we should be able to slide out our Damien Sabre core. Now the last thing we're gonna need to unscrew to fully disassemble this are the grub screws because right now this metal piece is actually screwed into them. Now if you're 3D printing the plastic version of these files, you're going to have to melt the M4 threaded inserts directly into this part and into the plastic rods too, meaning this entire component is going to be one piece. But we can unscrew them in this version, just like so. There we go. And the other piece too, let's see what happens. Voila. Now for this half of the light baton, they're actually all glued together. So we have this tip right here, this middle piece and this black portion, they're all glued together. So now that we have all of our 3D printed parts disassembled, I'm gonna start moving these aside and we're actually going to start talking about the lightsaber core. So this is a lightsaber core by Damien Saber. It's meant to be used with their NeoPixel blades. And for this project, I actually had to modify this extensively. So the very first thing I did was glue a eight by two millimeter magnet onto the button itself. If you're building this, be very careful not to get glue inside the button or else it will get stuck and you won't be able to undo it. So just a little bit of glue on the magnet will be enough. Make sure that it's properly aligned with the center of the button and you'll be golden. Now the other thing I did was actually add a M3 threaded insert directly into the plastic of the core. This was because the hole was just slightly bigger than the threading of my M3 screws. So I just figured I'd melt a threaded insert directly into the hole to solve that issue. Now when I was planning this project out, I was trying to find cores that actually had lights built into them. Now they do exist Exist. The only issue is they are soldered directly onto the same pin as the lightsaber blade. So I figured I'd just get a standard version of the lightsaber core with a profi board and just figure out how to modify it to get the lights built into them. That way I could just repurpose the code and the fonts from the identity disk by Shrieker on Colts 3D. So if you want to learn how to upload code and get the fonts working on the profi board 2.2, I highly recommend you go check out my video on the identity disk. It's the exact same process. And there's also a bunch of resources on Online on how to upload code and get fonts working on lightsabers that use profi boards. So you're definitely not going to have a hard time finding the information needed. It is everywhere. So with that out of the way, let's get to the actual modifications I made to the core itself. So the first thing I did was unscrew the lightsaber core and open it up to take a look at the electronics. Then right by this screw here at the very front of the lightsaber core, I ended up dremeling a small slot so that I could sandwich in a kill switch. Now for the wiring, it was nothing too crazy. I just just had to unsolder one or two wires going to the profi board and to this recharge module at the front. And then the second modification I made was this slot right here for the NeoPixel strip. So the RGB lights I ended up using for this side light right here are the exact same as the outer blade on the identity disc. They're 35 by 35 strips with 144 pixels per meter. And to give you an idea of the length, I used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I used a length of seven NeoPixels for this strip. And I placed it along the side here at the exact same place as the button and the USB-C port because there's a huge hollow portion inside the lightsaber core, meaning there's plenty of room for lights. And the slot that I cut was about five centimeters by five millimeters wide. So just using a Dremel, I just cut that open and then glued in the NeoPixels and added all the extra leads needed. So for the power, I soldered it directly to the kill switch. For the ground wire, I just found an extra ground connector on the profi board. And for the digital input, I soldered it to the second connector right here on the side of the profi board. Basically, I'm reusing the exact same pin for the inner C ring on the identity disk when using the profi board 2.2. And that's pretty much all the modifications I made to the Damien Saber core. I added a kill switch, I added a magnet on the button, and I added the slot here with the NeoPixels. And there's one other modification I made to the config file for the identity disk to get it to work with this core. And that has to do with the buttons. So in the config file, I changed the number of buttons to one. And then for the button type, I added an include props saberfet 263 buttonsh And now that we have them reassembled, all we need is this lightsaber blade to plug in and screw in with this Allen key. Just like so, dope. Now, if I flip on the kill switch, 
We get some sound effects and the number pad lights up. And if we hold the button, we get the change of font. And I also was able to track down the exact same sound effect that plays in the movie when they pick up the light baton to add to my own font. So I'm just gonna cycle back to Kevin Flynn and turn on the blade. There we go. Whoa. <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't hit anything just then. There we go. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. Now one other neat feature I wanted to include with this design but it just didn't end up working was a method to easily attach two light batons together. Now initially I was gonna use this right here. So this is a locking cap that uses some spring plungers to be able to attach to this end. And on the opposite side, I was gonna have a female version that could clip in for the light baton. The only issue is this connection was extremely loose and just didn't stay on. Which is why I designed this version of the cap, which is a dual ended sound chamber. So if I were to unscrew this, now if I just plug these together, there you have it. We have a giant light baton staff. Now the only thing that's missing right now are the lightsaber blades, but that's because I wanna show this off properly. So we're gonna cut to some B-roll and I'm gonna show you guys what these light batons can really do. So that's going to be it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions like how to build your own light baton or any specific questions, please let me know in the comments down below. And a huge thank you again goes out to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and for sponsoring the channel. And I really hope to see you guys in the next one.